All right, 2009 number one question, uh, probably the most comprehensive and in-depth FRQ that I've seen that doesn't include unit six. So this is perfect for the 2020 exam, something that they could really throw at you, you know, minus all the models that you have to draw out. But actually, all the questions definitely could show up. This one has so many different concepts in it. It covers the Phillips curve. It covers real and nominal interest rates. It covers the money market, the open market operations, aggregate supply and demand, as well as long run adjustment and the natural rate of unemployment. So there's a lot of different things that it's looking at. So it's really a great type of question to practice on and a good example of what could show up on this year's exam. All right, so assume that the U.S. economy is in long-run equilibrium with an expected inflation rate of 6% and an unemployment rate of 5%. The nominal interest rate is 8%, so that's very, very important information and a good starting point for us. So we're in long-run equilibrium, that means we're at full employment. All right, um, using a correctly labeled graph with both the short-run and long-run Phillips curve and the relevant numbers from above, very important, show the current long-run equilibrium as point A. All right, so I'm going to start with the ASAD curves. Not that you have to draw this, just, 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 but just to explain where we're at. So um, here's our long run and short run Phillips curves. Remember our vertical axis has the inflation rate, not interest rates. And down on the horizontal axis, we have the unemployment rate. Now we need to put these numbers in here, these labels for our inflation rate and our unemployment rate. We can grab them from up above because that's where they want it from. When they specifically give you numbers, you have to use them on the models. So our unemployment rate is 5% as stated above. Our inflation rate, not interest rate, inflation rate 6% on the vertical axis right there. All right, so that is it for part A. All right, we've got our model. What's in red, you need to put down. What, you know, the ASAD curves don't need to be there. It's just to help guide our discussion. All right, now part B, calculate the real interest rate in the long run equilibrium. This one is a very, very simple point to get. All right, we don't have any loanable funds models indicated anywhere in this question or the few models missing from this question. So we're going to get the real interest rate from taking our nominal interest rate, subtracting our inflation rate, and ending up with 2% real inflation. All right, so that's our real interest rate. All right, now part C, assume now that the Federal Reserve decides to target an inflation rate of 3%, what open market operations should the Federal Reserve undertake? So we want to get to 3%. We are at 6%. So we need price levels to go down. All right, so we want price levels down. How do we get price levels down? We need to shift aggregate demand to the left. So aggregate demand needs to go down. What open market operation can the Federal Reserve engage in? to get to this point, to drop those price levels, to get the expected inflation rate from 6% down to 3%. All right, so we want aggregate demand to go down. Here's our money market, okay? Part D is gonna have us draw this out, so we're gonna do it right now. Um, we have our interest rate on the vertical axis, nominal interest rates, we got our quantity of money on the horizontal axis, we've got our vertical money supply curve, our downward sloping money demand curve. All right, so we want interest rates to go up. In order to get aggregate demand to go down, interest rates need to go up, and that would curb interest-sensitive consumption and investment spending. Okay, so what we need is our money supply to shift to the left. What open market operation will get us to that point? In this case, we're either talking about buying or selling bonds. Buying bonds would actually increase the money supply, so we're going to want to go with selling bonds. The appropriate open market operation is to sell government bonds. That would bring that money supply to the left, that would bring up the interest rates, that would bring down aggregate demand, and also bring down the price level with it. So that's it for answer C right there. Answer D, we've already done. We've got our money supply, we've got our money demand curves, we've got our properly labeled axes, and we have our leftward shifting money supply curve that shows that open market operation that they took. All right. Question E, how will the interest rate change you identified in part D affect aggregate demand in the short run? Explain, all right? We kind of talked about this already, but that left shifting aggregate demand curve, we have to explain why, all right? So we can use that idea of the interest rate increasing. Aggregate demand would decrease because as the interest rate increases, it would cause interest sensitive consumption and investment to decrease, causing aggregate demand to decrease as well. All right, I already stated that, but just there's a perfect answer for this question. All right, part F, assume that the Federal Reserve action is successful. What will happen to each of the following as the economy approaches a new long-run equilibrium? This is the toughest part of this question here. 
Um, so we want to know what's going to happen to the short run Phillips curve as we approach long run equilibrium, that auto adjustment that takes place, and explain it, and then what's going to happen to the natural rate of unemployment. All right, so here we are in equilibrium, and earlier we decided that aggregate demand is going to shift to the left, bringing price level down, and that would cause our point A to shift down to point B. All right, we would, draw, we would have a higher unemployment rate, a lower inflation rate. So this is where we're at. Now the long run adjustment would take place. That aggregate demand shift to the left brings down price levels. So inflationary expectations have gone down. Sticky prices, wages, input prices would go down as well. And that would allow for our short run aggregate supply curve to shift back to the right. Now in response to that, because inflationary expectations went down, because input prices went down, and our short run aggregate supply curve shifted to the right, we're going to see our short run Phillips curve shift to the left and bring our, our new point there, point C, with a lower inflation rate and also a lower unemployment rate, kind of bringing unemployment back to the natural rate of unemployment. All right, so the short run Phillips curve would shift to the left. Why? And this is the difficult part of it. College Board answer simply states that inflationary expectations have gone down. That's the easy explanation. So I included that, but I also talked about how eventually sticky prices and input prices would go down. That would cause aggregate supply to shift to the right and the short run Phillips curve to shift left. So any way you want to handle that one will work, but make sure you're identifying something that shifted the aggregate supply curve that would shift the short run Phillips curve as well. Now, uh, part two of we have the natural rate of unemployment would not change. And this is an easy answer. Natural rate doesn't change. Currently 4 to 6%, it's not going anywhere. Unless they specifically state that the natural rate of unemployment has changed, that's the only thing that's going to actually change it. So in this case, it doesn't change at all. All right, so that sums up this question. It is an in-depth one, but it's definitely one worth taking your time and working your way through. All right, thanks for taking a look at this video. Uh, make sure you check out my other FRQ walkthroughs. So until next time, guys, take care.